The difference between art and craft, in my opinion, is when it's an art, you're not limited by your materials. You can get a can of paint and throw it on a wall, and that's art. But a craft is where you get a can of paint and you paint everything. It's supposed to be painted and put no paint on anything that's not supposed to be painted. And that's the difference I see. It's a craft. Yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be lost. Um, I think there should be some positive state intervention in terms of helping Thatchers. I mean, when anyone's new and they start with you, they are actually going to slow you down. So there should be some incentive in order for you to take someone on, in order to be able to train them, which, depending on the person, I would say consider two years being the minimum. Probably because, unfortunately, we are a, a, a slightly rare species. Okay, yeah, um, like there's carpenters, probably within a mile from here, there's probably two carpenters. Within a mile from here, there's, there's, there would have been two Thatchers, but God, there's not now, you know, so, um, I'd say it would be the rarity. Good, bad or indifferent, the red carpet still gets rolled out. Because there's a big burnout rate for Thatchers, you know? People do it for a few years, realise how difficult it is, and they just disappear, you know? Oh, uh, you need to be very patient, I suppose. And you need to be tough, too, as well, and just take knocks and bangs and... and be good at, uh, at doing different things. Uh, uh, sometimes you just have to be like that guy who used to be MacGyver. You just had to like and make do with what you have and try to fix this and sort this out. And it's tough work. It's hard work, and it's you know what I mean. It's, it's it's not heavy weights you're lifting, but you're lifting a lot of them. Dedication. I I think uh, I definitely not afraid to work. It's a physical job and. The term slacker, if you're a slacker, it's not going to suit you um, because it just takes so long to do a job when you're on your own. Okay, it's hard, it's repetitive, but uh, you're thinking along. It's like playing chess. Every bundle is different. It takes up a different place on the roof. So you know, you're not going to march in with your queens and your kings or your bishops where you can put a pawn. So you build from the bottom up, so that finally when you get to the top, you're going to have no difficulty closing in and staying with a proper pitch the whole way up, proper contour. Uh, yeah, the fall off the roof that time, yeah, I didn't, you know, that was, that was you know, I've had a few injuries here and there, but uh, I get over everything. And uh, as I said, yeah, the weather can be dementing some you know at times you know i remember being at a attached house in galway and it rained and it rained it never stopped raining and i even got up at night time thinking maybe I'd, it doesn't rain at night but it rained at night time it just kept it just kept raining the whole time and i was around the back of the house it was flooded and i tripped over something and i fell in me back into the water like that and i got up and i had some temper and then i calmed down and i looked up at the sky and i says why do you test me why do you test me? Says I, that. I will not give in. Like that, you know, I will not give in. Like that. I've had, and, but it was just, what do you do? You just have to have patience. And but having lived in Kilmore Quay for six years and then working inland, one thing that you will always miss is the wind. The wind is a friend. And it's a friend in that when it gets extreme, you get a big adrenaline rush from working in it. Um, it blows any sense you think you have in you, out of you, and yet there is adrenaline because you're hanging on for dear life. And I, I like working in extreme conditions. But it's, it's like having a good girlfriend. You still keep going back. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, of course you have your doubts when you face into it. I, I've done quite a bit of work in Donegal and I see me sitting for a week at a time looking out at the rain. I can't see myself ever giving it up. To tell you the truth, I've no, I'll never retire. I'll just keep doing it, even if it's only making the spars and doing something to be connected with the job like that and everything like that. Uh, you know, but as long as I can go and people feel 
they trust me, uh, I will keep going up ladders till, till the day, I suppose, um, that I just can't lift them anymore and that's it, like, you know. I think that in terms of mobility, it's important to keep moving, okay? So I'm going to keep moving as long as I can because I think that lengthens your life rather than shortens it. And I'm still pretty agile. I mean, you know, I still run up and down ladders. And as long as I can do, I see no reason to stop it whatsoever. <laughs>
I'm listening to the, the, the music. I'm listening to the crack. Because when we both go silent, you really tend to get into the flow. So what I'm hearing is, is the, crack of, the crack of the wood and the chop of the point. And to me, that's just... It's, it's, it's a little bit medit like meditation. You hear that? And then after a while, you, you know, when you're doing this, you kind of, you kind of, like I've done three cuts, three cuts, clean, clean, drop. And after a while, you're doing that in your head, you know? And, it, and then if you break it, then you're kind of, ah, bastard. It's hard when you're talking to, you know. It breaks your rhythm. It breaks your rhythm, yeah. It breaks your dance, the dance of the thatcher. Like when you're on the roof and you're thatching away and you're on your own, you actually start to dance. So it does, it takes a, a certain sort of a person to be a Thatcher, I think. You have to be, first, you have to be a, a philosopher. <laughs> a lot of Thatchers, are, I find, are very spiritual. I guess it's because they work with, you know, they work with materials that grow out of the earth, you know. You don't buy them down in Chadwick's or your local building store. You know, even our hooks say, that is made by, that's made especially for this job. Probably by a very old man forged out of the one piece of metal. So you can't buy that in a shop. So everything the Thatcher uses her surrounded by is kind of natural. So you do get a great pre appreciation of nature and, and all that. And, and also, I suppose, when you be on the roof, Finny, you're always looking out at the, the lovely views, you know? Because when, you know, when you touch the roof, it's a, it's, a, it's a, in a way it's a horrendous experience, right? And there's, there's always the joke like, you'll meet God two or three times during the roof. That's our taper then. You see the way it tapers away to nothing? And then this is our fat end, which is the bit you'll see on the roof. The straw must be all straight in there. Can't be any knots or bumps or humps. A quick clean. So basically, see the top end? Mm -hmm and then it chamfers down. That is the only bit you will see on the roof. All that is underneath.
put it on, I'll open it out, let the air into it, because it's wet straw. Shake it up, let the air in. Love that sound. Watch this face now when we start to hammer it in. See it springing? Inviting the air. Now you can imagine that's heavy rain. You see how quick it's coming off the roof? broke you got to leave me and you never get him out When a, an adult has an imaginary friend, he's considered crazy. And when a collection of people have an imaginary friend, it's called religion. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Oh, it's a monster of a house because there's so many features. You know, there's like nine windows. One, two, three, four hips, two valleys, uh, 
two leaded valleys. Chimney. Yeah, it's it is certainly a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, yeah.
Makes me so fucking alive. sound that sound Absolutely love it. And she was the um, she was the personal courier for Garrett Pierce, the lawyer famous lawyer who got the Birmingham Six and the Guildford Four out of jail. That was her personal courier. Everything that was handed or went from court back to solicitors was, was taken by that lady. She was a lovely lady. I was 20, 43, I was 21. I was 20, 21 years of age there. <laughs> that was such a beautiful time. Was it your horse? Yeah. Yeah, that was my horse and wagon. I was going over to Connor Pass, going from Dingle to Brandon. Right up, have you ever gone over to Connor Pass? Well, I did it with a pony and a cart. <laughs> it's right up and it's right down. It's top of the world. I've never felt so free in all my life. No, I'm delighted that the route is finished. But I'm very sad to leave this, this, uh, this neighborhood. Oh, it's one of those jobs where you kind of become part of the family, you know? It's very rewarding. Very, very It's nice to finish on a Saturday, isn't it? Horrible finishing a job on a Monday or a Wednesday. <laughs> this is it now, it's the burning of the old.
Sometimes I think of the land and its untouched beauty. Change comes only with the passing of a season. Sometimes I think of the sweet scent of nature, my senses bewitched with simplicity. Sometimes I think of the great ocean and the strength and power it holds within a still and awesome vastness. Sometimes I think of love and the passion that hides behind each break of laughter and each silent teardrop. Sometimes I think of my life and how it's filled with so much meaning. My heart waits for that single awakening of a new morning. And sometimes I think of you.